Good morning, guys, and welcome to today's midweek message. Hopefully you find today's message encouraging and enlightening. But if you're looking for more ways to partner with the church, there's four simple ways to do so. The first way is you can give online. You can visit watersedgegathering.com and click on giving. From there, you'll be led to eGive, our online giving platform. Or you can text to give. You can text the word GIVE to 337-223-9003. From there, you can enter your dollar amount and then you'll be led to on-screen instructions. Or you can give within the church app. Make sure to go to your app store or wherever you get apps from and look for the church app. It'll be a white icon with a gray cross. And from within the church app, search Waters Edge Gathering. From there, click give and you can give your tithes and offerings. Or you can give by mail. You can do so by mailing Waters Edge Gathering at P.O. Box 572, Lake Charles, Louisiana 70602, or Waters Edge Gathering at 2760 Power Center Parkway, Lake Charles, Louisiana 70607. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now enjoy today's midweek message from Pastor Tony. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to our Wednesday morning midweek Bible teaching video. We hope you're having a great week. For those of you who are continuing to tune in to our Sunday morning online worship experience, thank you so much. We hope it's very helpful to you. For those of you who are continuing to be generous to your church, you're continuing to give, we're continuing to counsel with people, baptize people, feed people, minister to the homeless. We're doing all those types of things. So thank you so much for loving your church enough to be generous to it during this tough, tough time. Thank you. We hope this helps you out today. You know, Jackie and I live in a very quiet little neighborhood downtown. To be honest with you, it's not the type of neighborhood, uh, and I love this neighborhood, it's really not the type of neighborhood where people pop in for a visit. It's kind of quiet. It's kind of secluded. And let's be honest, our society has changed so greatly today because of technology. People would rather a text message instead of a phone call. People would rather an email instead of a phone call. And then one step further, people would rather a phone call instead of an unannounced visit at your house. Um, and so if someone is going to visit, you at least want to know about it ahead of time. You at least want it to be planned out. And so we've become very secluded today. We've become very isolated, and we're not as personal or as connected as we used to be. So most people don't mind having company, though. Most people actually enjoy that. In fact, when we get out this quarantine time, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be ready for some company. But most of the time, when life is just normal, you would like to know about company coming over first before they come over. During the week, many of you work very difficult jobs till either 5 or 6 o'clock at night. You don't get home till 5.30 or 6.30 at night. Then you got kids and you have to worry about if they've done their homework. You have to get dinner ready and figure all those types of things out. And so the last thing you really want is someone knocking at your door unannounced unless it's planned. But then there are Saturdays. Now, if your Saturdays are anything like Jackie and I's Saturdays, we usually take those days to really rest and relax and not do much, mostly because my Saturday is like most people's Sunday. I have to work on Sunday. And so we take Saturday to not do much. In fact, I usually stay in my robe and my Star Wars pajamas unless I have to get up and go somewhere. I'll stay in those all day or at least until the crack of noon. So we like to relax on our Saturdays. We don't like to do much. We don't like to plan much. We just like to hang out. And so several Saturdays ago, I guess it was around, I don't know, 12.30 or 1 p.m., uh, Jackie and I were laying around in the living room, just laying on the couch, watching TV, watching Netflix, what we normally do, that kind of stuff. And uh, we didn't have any plans for anyone to come over. And then I see a truck pull into our driveway. But it wasn't just any truck. It was a sudden link truck. truck. Now, the guy who was driving this truck was the same guy who had come over to our house uh, just about a month before trying to sell us a new cable and Wi-Fi package. And I told him at the time that I wasn't sure if I was interested in a new cable or Wi-Fi package, but that I, I got his card and that I would call him and let him know. I would call him and let him know if I was interested. And so this Saturday, this same guy pulled up into our driveway that I had already told a month earlier that I would call him if I was interested. And so, man, 
when he pulled up into our driveway, Jackie and I, it was just us there uh, in our robes and PJs watching TV, you would have thought that robbers were about to break in. Who's that? Who's in our driveway? Who's at our house? Who's driving up? We didn't plan for any company. I mean, we are freaking out. And so, like, you would have thought that, that criminals were about to break in. So we're scrambling on what to do. Now, our front door under our front porch there's these big, big windows, and then our front door is full of windows. And so you can see right into our living room. So if you come to our front door and you look just through the windows on the front door, you can see into our entire house. You can see who's in the living room, what's in the living room. You can see everything. And so the guy's knocking on our front door, and he's looking at us in the living room. And Jackie and I are freaking out trying to figure out what to do. We're sitting here trying to trying to talk and brainstorm and how to get this guy to go away. And he's looking at us do this in our living room while he's knocking on our front door. And so the guy's just standing there knocking on the door. He can see us. We're freaking out. And Jackie's like, are you going to answer the door? And I'm like, no, you do it. And then she goes, I'm not going to do it. And I said, okay, let's just pretend like we're not here. And Jackie says, he's looking at us through the window. He can see us. He knows that we're here. And then I say, well, let's just pretend like we're not home. This is fun. To which she says, he can see us. He knows that we're home. To which I said, quick, well, let's let's run back to the bedroom and just shut the door. And then Jackie said, but he'll see us run back to the bedroom. To which I said, yes, but when we go back to the bedroom, we won't be able to see him anymore. We can just turn on the TV in our bedroom and just forget about it. So that's what we do. We get up, He's knocking on the front door. He sees us get up, walk from the living room to the back bedroom, and close the door. And so we're just hanging out. And so I finally hear uh, the knocking on the door stop. And then guess what happens next? You think he would leave when he saw us get up and go to the bedroom, but he doesn't. My phone starts ringing. This same salesman is trying to call me. He's calling me, so I don't answer. I don't answer at all. <laughs> So then, because I don't answer, I get a text message from this guy saying, Hey, remember me. I'm at your front door. I want to talk to you about that package. So then I get kind of aggravated because, to be honest with you, this feels very intrusive. This isn't what I wanted for this Saturday. I just want him to go away. So I'm very aggravated because I told him just a month before that that I would contact him if I was interested, but now it feels like he's intruding on Jackie and I's personal time. So then Jackie asked me, what are you going to text him back? Because he saw us through the windows run back to the bedroom, to which I said, I know the perfect thing to text him to get him to go away. She raised her eyebrows. She's like, what are you going to tell him? I said, this is the perfect thing to text him to get him to go away. And so this is what I text him. Hey, man, sorry, we're not home today. <laughs> which he knew we were home, but that was my way of telling him, get out of here. That was about two months ago, and I hadn't heard from him since. But when it feels like something or someone is intruding, intruding on your personal time, your personal space, your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, and your mind, then you can either put up with the intrusion, or you can figure out a way to make the intruder and the intrusion go away, get out of your life. And so today, I want to talk about the intruders, very specific intruders of our life of fear, anxiety, and stress. Most of the time, fear is not something that we want in our life. Anxiety and stress is not a welcome guest in our life. They are intruders. And so our goal is to force these intruders out of our thoughts, out of our feelings, and out of our mind. And we do that through God's love, humility, and acknowledging and confronting our own personal weaknesses. But today, I want to actually talk to you about why we battle with so much fear, anxiety, and stress. I want to talk to you about where it starts and how to remove those intruders from your life. And so this is what it is. This is where most of it starts. This is how the battle begins. It starts with our very own intrusive thoughts. So you and I have thoughts that are like intruders. We don't want them. We really don't create them. We don't welcome them. And we want them out of our life. Most of the thoughts that we battle with in this life are intrusive thoughts that we wish would just go away. 
Now, the people who wrote the different books or the letters that we find in the scriptures had a lot to say about our mind and about our thoughts and about what we think about. And so today I want us to look at two different passages that was written by the missionary Paul. And what's so fascinating about these verses is this. The person who wrote this, the missionary Paul, had a lot of negative and painful, awful things happen to him in this life. He lost his reputation. He probably lost his family because of his conversion to Christ from the Jewish religion. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a viper. He was abandoned by the people that were closest to him, the people that he loved. He had been beaten, arrested, tortured, and then eventually he was going to get beheaded. His life was going to end because of his faith in Christ. But yet, in spite of all that, notice what he would do to stay focused and encouraged. By the way, when someone causes you to lose your reputation, when you lose your family, when you've been shipwrecked, when you despair of your life, when you are beaten and arrested and tortured, those are very fearful thoughts. Those are thoughts that are full of stress and anxiety. But notice what he did to stay focused and to stay encouraged. So if anyone has the credibility to speak to us today about how to handle intrusive anxiety thoughts, fearful thoughts, and stressful thoughts. It's the missionary Paul. Notice what he would do to keep moving forward, to keep trusting in God, and to keep his faith strong. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. Since you've been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Notice that phrase, the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. You know, in this life, we need reminders. And the reason why we need reminders is because our mind has intruders. You and I need reminders. And the reason why we need reminders is because our thoughts have intruders. We have negative thoughts, dark thoughts, unstable thoughts, uncertain thoughts, irrational thoughts, thoughts that produce fear, anxiety, and stress. And in Paul's day, it was no different. So in chapter 3 of Colossians, he starts off by reminding these Christians about what their mind is supposed to be focused on. They were going through discouragement. They were going through heartache and pain, storms and battles, and he wants to give them a reminder of what to focus their intrusive thoughts on. And so this was the reminder, and it came in three parts. And we find these three parts in this passage. Number one, you have a new life in Christ, and with that comes new opportunities. When you give your life to Christ and He gives you a brand new life, now you have new opportunities for peace and purpose and significance and love and strength in this life. He has that for you. You have a new life. And so when it seems like your life today is falling apart, remind yourself of that. Remind your mind of that, that in Christ you have a new life with new opportunities every single day. The Bible says that God's mercies are new every single morning. God has a new mercy for you every single day. Why? Because every day comes with its own unique challenges and we need a new mercy every day. And that's how much God loves you. The second thing is this, you have a new destination in life. He says to set your sights on the realities of heaven. Now, this phrase, the realities of heaven, this is what it means in the original. It means that God is real. He's reality. It means that Jesus is real. He's reality. God's love is real. God's forgiveness is real. God's hope is real. God's plan for you is real. God's purpose for you is real. It's reality. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is not some fairy tale. God is not some fog out there past Mars. He is so real and so personal and so intimate. And so set your mind on the reality that God is with you and that God loves you. Because of Jesus, our life can go in a different direction and ultimately end up in a different place. Now, this is what it means that you have a new destination because you have a new life. Before I met Jesus, the destination of my life Life was depression, discouragement, fear, anxiety, and stress. But now my life can end up in a place of strength, faith, and peace. I have a new life with a new destination. So I set my sights and my mind on Jesus. Number three, we all have a new weapon. Paul says to think about the things of heaven, not of earth. Think about the things of heaven, 
not of earth. And this is what that means. The things of earth are the intruders, the triggers. The things of earth are the triggers that bring fear, stress, and anxiety into your life. And so Paul says, don't constantly think about those things. Don't constantly dwell on those things, but instead think about the things of heaven. In other words, dwell on your faith that you have in Christ instead of always dwelling on what could possibly go wrong tomorrow. Dwell on your strength that you have in Christ. Dwell on your purpose. Dwell on your new life. Dwell on your new destination. Dwell on your new hope. Dwell on your new love. Dwell on your new freedom that you have in Christ instead of always focusing and stressing on those things that may happen tomorrow or may not happen tomorrow. Change the focus of what you let your thoughts focus on and that can be one of your greatest weapons. Let me say that again. Change your focus of what you let your thoughts focus on and that can be your greatest weapon. You know, remembering usually has to do with what we think about concerning the past, but focusing has to do with what we think about concerning where we're going to end up in the future. So focus, it's one of your greatest weapons that God has given you. Notice how Paul puts it in the letter of Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true. Fix them. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me, and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Right here, the missionary Paul says, fix your thoughts. Focus on what you think about. Train your mind to think about things that bring you strength, peace, and freedom. Train your mind. And then he says that when you do that, it'll be easier to live a peaceful life because now you can put what you're thinking about into practice. I know what some of you are thinking. Tony, this all sounds really, really good, but what does this mean? Well, it means this, and notice this today. If you're still with me, Sam's still with you. What you constantly think about will determine what you constantly feel and what you eventually do. Let me say that again. What you constantly think about will determine how you constantly feel and what you eventually do. So, if we want to feel different, and if we want to live different, then we have to focus on living in a new way, we have to figure out how to deal with these intrusive thoughts and how to think about and train our mind to think about what brings us faith and peace in Christ. So in light of all that, let me show you how to do that. Let me teach you how to do that. Let me give you a few simple observations to help us change what consumes our thoughts from what's negative and anxious and stressful to what's peaceful and faith building. Now, intrusive thoughts are thoughts that come into your mind that depress you, that give you anxiety, stress, and fear, and that you don't want in your life. These are the constant thoughts that we have in our mind that we wish would just go away. I've been going through that recently, and that's why I'm teaching on this right now. Man, I've been struggling with so many what-if thoughts, and probably many of you have too. What if? What if I can't make this payment? What if we can't figure this out? What if we lose everything? I don't know about you, but I've been battling with those thoughts so, so deeply lately, and it's been so difficult. So the question is, when these thoughts break into our mind, how do we refocus our mind onto Christ, peace, and faith? Here's a few things that will help. Number one, simply acknowledge the thought. Sometimes pretending like you don't have a troubling thought is going to make it worse. It's just going to make it worse. It causes you to focus on it even more. So something I do is this. I simply admit to myself that I'm having a troubling thought. I acknowledge it. I'm having this thought. It's troubling. And I remind myself that this thought is not stronger than me, that it's just the thought, and I let it flow on by. So I acknowledge it. Yes, I'm having a tough day. Yes, I'm having some tough thoughts, but I'm stronger than these thoughts. They're just thoughts, and I'm going to let them flow on by. I don't try to pretend like they're not there. That'll just make it worse. I acknowledge that I have them. Number two, then I refocus my energy. Intrusive thoughts often come to us either when our brains are too busy or our brains are too quiet. So when nothing's going on in your mind, that's when intrusive thoughts come, or when too much is going on in your mind, 
That's when intrusive thoughts come. So when this happens, I have to make my brain engage with something else. So if your mind is dealing with fear, anxiety, and stress over whatever, the future, the kids, a pandemic, money, relationships, family, your marriage, negativity, worry, and on and on, learn how to think on purpose. On purpose. Refocus your mind and make yourself think about what makes you worship? What makes you laugh? What makes you relax? What makes you feel accomplished? Focus on your goals, how to achieve your goals, creating moments with the people that you love. Focus your mind on what is pure and good and lovely and noble. Fix your thoughts. Think on purpose. Number three, tell yourself that it's just a thought. Another way to reclaim power over unwanted thoughts is to remind yourself of this. Remind yourself that it's just a thought and a thought by itself has no power. You have thousands of thoughts every single day that don't affect your life. Thousands of thoughts every single day. It's just a thought. Unwanted thoughts have no power over us because, let me say this, unwanted thoughts doesn't have to have power over us, but many times they do have power over us because they raise emotions in us that we don't like. And what are these emotions and feelings? Fear, anxiety, and stress that come from just thoughts. That's what we feel. And so this is how we deal with those things. The last thing is this. Remind yourself that you're going to be okay. Now, some things in life that we go through are tragic. And tragedy will devastate us. So in dealing with tragedy, heartache, and pain, it's perfectly okay to admit sometimes that you're not okay. Sometimes I admit that, that I'm not okay. Sometimes it's okay to fall apart. But when dealing with these unwanted, pesky, intrusive thoughts, thoughts that try to scare you and stress you and produce anxiety and fear and discouragement in your life, then this is something I tell myself all the time. All the time I tell myself this. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. It's okay if... It's okay. One thing that always fills my mind with peace is when I tell myself that because of Jesus, I'm going to be okay. So when something is troubling my mind, causing me stress and fear and anxiety, I simply remind myself, it's okay. It's okay if I have car trouble. It's okay if I don't feel so good today. I'm stronger than this. This is not going to destroy me. It's okay if my friends don't understand. It's okay if I don't like my new job. It's okay if I'm not perfect. I'm stronger than this. It's not going to destroy me. It's okay if we have an argument. I'm stronger than this. It's not going to destroy me. It's okay if I say the wrong thing. It's okay if I fail at some of my goals. I'm stronger than this. It will not destroy me. It's okay if I have to start completely over. It's okay if someone gossips about me. I'm stronger than this. This will not destroy me. It's okay if my kids make mistakes. It's okay if my relationship ends. It's okay if I have to forgive myself over my past. I'm stronger than this and this will not destroy me. Remind yourself every single day that it's okay if this happens. It's okay. It's just a thought that I'm dealing with and thoughts are not stronger than my relationship with Jesus Christ. Psalms 94 19. When doubt fills my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. When doubt fills our mind, Jesus is always there to give us comfort. And that comfort gives us hope and joy and peace. We love you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope this has helped you out. Remember, those thoughts that you have that are intrusive, they're not stronger than you. And you don't have to keep them in your life any longer to push you around. We love you. See you Sunday morning. Have a great rest of the week.